What was an amazing set here at Paradigm 2019, we are blessed with perhaps one of the most special guests at this event because this here, my friend, is a time traveller from 1354, he's come through many intricate inf infinite universes and some magical music box has had him land here today in Melbourne, Mandragora, better known as, or also known as NATO. Thank you very much for being here today. The energy of that set was amazing. How are you feeling after playing to that crowd? <laughs> you memorized the complete thing. The <laughs> <laughs> shit. Well, uh, uh, how I how I feel after playing here? Uh, I feel, of course, pretty good. Like it was super good for me like what i saw from my point of view yeah i'm satisfied like that, that's the feeling i have yep. satisfied I, I didn't know what to expect so well we walked around from all sorts of the sides of the stage and the energy okay. there every every drop even not even the drops just the roars of the crowd i haven't heard it go ah 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 like that <laughs> for a very long time that was it was special mate um thank you for coming well man like <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. So I guess t tell us where, where where have you come from? Because you have been traveling through well, many intricate universes, and, and how's that experience been? I, actually, I don't remember <laughs> about <laughs> that part because then I was born in my present body, I guess. <laughs> but right now, I'm I flew from Brazil. Yep. Here, I was playing there, producing some new music. Mm -hmm. with 420 yep. and then we got here we played in Sydney there was a pretty nice international crowd like yeah, awesome. there was heaps of Mexican and Brazilian guys yeah lots of Indian people like it like a lot of a international fans that they told me yeah. yeah I saw you in my home country and I was like Woo, oh wow. it's fucking nice so do you not usually see that at other shows around the world no because uh, you got this thing in Australia these uh, working visa stuff yeah so yeah. lots of people come here from all around the world yep. and like whoa I already saw you in one club I don't know where like wow that's <laughs> cool yeah well we have seen you in other clubs like RMH and you're playing at the after party tonight at room 680 along with Great. Morton um, yeah, Morton Northern. I love him man yeah. he's such a great guy um, and he was his set was awesome again Shout earlier that's Martin, love um, you. Are there any artists in particular that you're looking forward to seeing here at Paradigm or that you've got to see so far today? Uh, I just saw Atkinson. Yeah. I never saw him play mm -hmm. and he was playing something that got my attention. Yeah. It was pretty good. <laughs> yep. And uh, after me, John O'Callaghan started playing like heavy. Yeah. Like, I never saw him live. Are they, they're they're I, not two artists that you're usually between. You're usually more on the kind of playing with Morton and the Captain Hooks and that sort of thing or do you I used to before yeah, yeah. I, before I used to play more with them but then I started changing my sound mm -hmm. and I guess I started getting book sure. booked elsewhere like yep. I still do play with them but yep. not as often as I used to yeah so what what has changed and I guess how did you implement that change into how you play today because that was a different set to what we've seen from you in the past well thing is it's like two years ago can I speak about drugs yeah go for it I had like a really heavy acid trip mm -hmm. and like I stopped doing acid for like two years yeah. because of like like it got me in such a mental state that I was like did that help okay you? this is where I need to be it did help me but it also fucked me at the same time yeah. because I made lots of shit music like I was gonna say did it help you focus on your music or it made it change yeah no it helped me focus to change because yeah. at the beginning I started making some stuff that I thought it was what I wanted to make. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to make that in the moment, but it was low grade, you know? Yeah, okay. Because it was, I had changed my style like completely. Yeah. And like in January, I was playing at some party in Switzerland and my European booker, it was his birthday. Yeah. And he came like up in the mouth and I was like, why? Like, 
put a paper and they're like, oh <laughs> shit, this shit just got real. Yeah. And then. Uh, so that was the first time in a couple of years that you. It was like. Why didn't I do this <laughs> <laughs> in the last two years? Yeah. But actually, like, I came to a point that I like synthesized everything that I wanted to do. Yes. And I just got back to the studio in Brazil with Fry20. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the founder of Alien Records, and he's yeah. also like my mixing. I love when they go fuck yeah. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> I, you like I know the fuck yeah? I know it's I know it's cheesy, but for me <laughs> for me it means like dude, you're rocking. <laughs> you <know>? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. Really, like, okay, you're doing a good job. Keep it like that. <laughs> yeah. But sorry, it's it's nice. Well, it's hard for um, a trance or a techno artist to have a crowd sing along usually because there's not a lot of vocals. Yeah, is but so it's I hard mean, to get that. It's like football chants. They get excited and they yeah. want they want to show to you that the gratitude that they appreciate what yep. you're doing. But back to what I was saying. Yep. I got back to Brazil and I produced a EP with Fry Twenty. Mm -hmm five tracks in like five days maybe yeah, sure. and uh, I, I really think those are the best tracks I've made to date yeah not because I'm like sucking my own That's dick awesome, man. <laughs> it's weird like for me to I, I took acid and then listened to it I never did the acid test with my own music <laughs> yeah and then I listened to my old stuff and I listened to this and I was like satisfied oh that's awesome so this is, yeah. this is the word of the month for so, me. So when did you complete those tracks? Uh, February. Yeah, no, so very And recent. I just tested them like yeah. two weeks ago. So your most recent release, you mentioned 4i20 on the SoundCloud is Phase. Yeah, uh, no, I'm not using SoundCloud that much anymore. Yeah. Uh, we just got the songs on YouTube. Okay, yeah. Uh, we go yep. to one party like now and we record the people and we just made like one cheesy music video <laughs> for a new track. Yep. So we try to keep releasing new stuff. Yeah, uh, sure. Instead of releasing like an album, yep. uh, we, we will release it as an album, mm -hmm. but feed it like, okay, here's a new YouTube video, here's another YouTube video. And then yep. when we finish, okay, now you can get the I album on iTunes complete. or whatever. Yep. Um, so we'll get to the YouTube channel in a moment, but... Uh, that the latest track that I have seen on SoundCloud is you and 4i20 called Phase. Yes. How long does a song like that take for you to make? Like that process, is that done? Well, I, I guess what takes more was like the, the thinking before it. Because mm -hmm. this is what changed in my process. Before I didn't think before making the music. I just came and like, okay, started clicking and then yep. started, things started making noise and yep. then I just saved it and that, that was it, Ran, random noise. Yeah, so now you plan... Not random noise, but like a non, non structured, structured? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. It's, but now, like, I, I need to think a lot before I make one track, like, okay, we want this kind of scales and this kind of feeling and we mm -hmm. want to put this kind of words in the lyrics and we yeah. want to put this kind of effects and then when we sit down we already have the track in our heads yeah. not not how it's going to sound but like it's yeah. pretty easy to make because yeah, we already know, know what, what we're going for you know rather than just um and then it's just a matter of bringing it out of you rather than just seeing what happens kind of thing yes because yeah. sometimes you can you, you can get sparks of genius in seeing what happens yeah. but I think when you think you can collect various sparks of genius and then make <laughs> a, a final product out of it. Sure. Yeah. Um, 4i20 is actually touring here on Easter weekend and he'll be playing oh, a, a nice. gig coming soon. Um, Self-promotion, I'll be supporting at that event as well. Please do so it. So we're um, looking forward to that one at Brown Alley. You were, you were supposed to play at Earthcore, and yeah. did you break your leg or something one year and couldn't come? Oh, yes! Fuck, man! Like, what happened there? Because you were supposed to play on the Thursday so, uh, night. Well, we well, rushed look, into the this, festival this, this, this a long story. to be there for you, see you play. Before I was... And then I've got to... Then I've got to watch Hands Down. Before <laughs> I was a professional whatever, going around charging for doing yeah. this thing, yeah. I, I used to just do it for fun and uh, one time I was playing at this party uh, with Mad Max like ooh, mm -hmm. maybe 10 years ago or more yeah. and 
while he was playing, I started like um, doing a mosh pit in the <laughs> dance floor. <laughs> yeah. But then one guy didn't like it, and he just <laughs> pushed me really hard, and I landed with my knee on a stair step. Oh and, right. And like I fucked my knee, and after that I still played my set. Yeah. Jumped in the stage. Drove back home. When I got back home, I couldn't get out of the car. Oh, so this was in your home country? Yeah, in yeah. Mexico. Yeah. Uh, so then I, I got to, went to the hospital, blah, blah, blah. Ten years after, I was playing in Brazil. Mm -hmm. It was the first time that I played AK-47. Yeah. Just on the drop. Yeah. Uh, like, m I, I gave, like, a, a, a misstep or yeah. something. And uh, my knee <laughs> and you dislocated. Like, yeah. And I dropped to the ground. And I was just listening to the people, like, fuck. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I want to see. So you know, the song dropped, and then you dropped. So it was a double drop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Okay. Um, but it was epic. It, it went yeah. viral. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, of all the festivals and bush doofs in the world, what's your favorite? Shit, man. Uh, I guess my favorite festival in the world is. The, the festival where that happens yeah. often, you know, <laughs> yeah. where the people start screaming a lot and yeah. like the people get in a nice vibe and are not like like the promoter cares about the client yeah. and about the artist. Like yeah. when the organizers and the audience are all caring about each other and the artist cares about the audience and everybody's caring about each other, that makes the best festival I ever played. Yeah. Like uh, this one, one of those yeah. for me. Like uh, I think. One bush dub, the first one I played here, yeah. it was like that. Um, I've had some some uh, festivals, pretty big name festivals I, I won't name, that yeah. didn't have that vibe, but sure. they were super good for my career. Yeah. And like other really small parties, like with 50 people, like in a club that I really thought nobody would go. Yeah. Well, were, I actually remember you way had more one special. here, I think. It was, uh, was it called Hit Enchanted Forest or Hidden Forest or something like that? I remember you, yes. you came and played at one and, and, and they put you at a really weird time in like six in the morning or something. And After oh. a chill out DJ. Yeah. So I had to play like one hour chill out yeah. and then one hour of like slow minimal and they were like, what time is Magic are playing? Like, yeah. it's him right there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I remember that. Yes. Yep. So for me, those are the best parties because I... It's, it's special, you know? Yeah. Is there one party that you haven't played at yet that you would like to? <laughs> I guess, as a Citrus artist, I'd love to play Boom as everybody. Of course. Of course. Yes. But Have you been? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, well. But we'll, we'll see you there next year. Yeah, I, I hope. <laughs> I hope one day I get invited. But um, as a festival in general, mm -hmm. like I'd love to play Coachella one day. Like yeah, right. Uh, that's yep. an artist dream. Like any general. Like yeah. How do you think your sound would? Um, well, how does your sound relate to the American audience? Do you have to change when you play here to them? No, or? I just played in LA in November, mm -hmm. and it's actually pretty much yeah. like like here and like in Brazil, like yeah. Where in I LA did, did you play? In uh, San Bernardino in the Dream State. Okay, cool. It was pretty good. Played after Ace Ventura, and uh, it was playing with Liquid Soul. Oh, right. Pretty good. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, and how uh, you said with some of your the newer tracks that you've been making, you have the Australian audience in mind, or they've helped influence some of the the tunes. Yeah, um, yeah, fuck like, yeah, man. How, how's, that, how's, how's that come about? Like, like, what what is it about the Australian audience that kind of just resonates with you? I, I think it resonates with uh, audio geeks. Yeah. Because I, I don't know what's about Australians, but you got artists like Mr. Bill or like the this, this Zenon record artists like mm -hmm. Tetrameth, or maybe commercial guys like Flume, but they all do this really intricate, like complex, shiny, nice yes. sound design yes. that actually a lot of people outside don't get it because mm -hmm. maybe you're used to it, like, yeah. and, and, and you actually like, it's an acquired taste. Yeah, sure. And uh, like if you go to play in France and you try to play this kind of sounds on a festival like this one, yep. You would kind of kill the crowd because the people would be like, oh, "What's this? All this squelchy, chunk, squelchy, chunky sounds like uh, yeah. there's there's no melodies, there's no yeah. song, whatever." Okay, Flume's filled with melodies, but yeah. yes. Mr. Bill also. But like, yeah. like Xenon Records can be super straight. I love it, but like for regular people, they will not get it if they don't have like melodies or stuff like that. Yeah. So, but I really love the sound design. Yes. 
So I wanted to put this kind of sound design in a more approachable, punky thing. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, like Nirvana is distorted, but they still use the same chord progression of the, as the Beach Boys. So, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah kind you, of like this. Yeah, because you you do have a lot of those feel good, but also twisted melodies in some of your yeah, songs, yeah. which is I think why we're so drawn to you. Um, but uh, songs, for example, like Carousel, Wild Wild West, uh, you've got they've got very uh, either fun or deep vocals in them. How important is a vocal to you? And do you write a song first and then add the vocal in, or do you get the idea of the vocal and write the song around that? Most of the time, I start with some chords and the vocal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. like because uh, I think that there's a layer uh, in music that is not used a lot, like in trance because they think that lyrics are cheesy. But still, like you can use lyrics or voice samples in a way that affect the mind yeah. in a in a good way. Yep. And it doesn't need to be cheesy, like just because you have someone singing, it doesn't mean that it's not psychedelic as long as whatever that person's saying is is psychedelic. But still, when you take psychedelics, everything turns psychedelics. You look at the wall. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah, so I just get the idea for, from some chords and some melodies, and then you start trying to put some words to it. Yes. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite club to play at? Club? Yeah. Okay, okay. Favorite club to play is called El Fortin in Brazil. Oh, really? I have a favorite because okay. yeah. it just goes wild. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, actually, I shouldn't be doing free promotion, but yeah, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it um, goes wild. I love it. We'll uh, we'll wrap it up soon, but uh, two two more little quick ones. No worries. Um, how do you see, I guess, the future of the genre and of Psytrance and, and particularly your sound progressing? because it, it does have such a strong impact and you mentioned all the different cultures that come to not only your gigs but we, we can see here today there's such a broad array of nationalities here um, you've got a lot of power to help influence the mind and help influence the thought of our youth um, so I guess how, how do you see the sound of and, and, and the genre in, in general I guess progressing well uh, I think progressive is like a, it's like one subgenre of psychedelic trends mm -hmm. then like I don't play anymore only progressive if, yeah. if you notice like I started with minimal finished with the high tech like that's yeah, it sure. yeah. but because I think I play the full spectrum of Psytrance okay. and then I think uh, Vinny Vici did a great job with the Tribe like yeah. concept like he actually like united a lot of people around the world yeah. around uh, the concept of Psytrance and mm -hmm. Tribe and mm -hmm. this playing so the think, old and the new yeah right? I think yeah. they brought they brought it to a new platform that it hadn't reached yet and I don't say that Psytrance is picking, it's yet to pick. Like, yeah. they just brought the sound to the, to the circuit, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's gonna be open, like, the Pandora's box. Like, yeah. the Pandora's box is gonna be open to a lot of new kinds of different Psytrance. Like, this is what made it first, you yes. know? Now, it's like a, a snowball <laughs> effect. Yep. Till it gets cheesy and boring, like, all the genres and everybody gets, has to get on with their life mm -hmm. and Tomorrowland's moves on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if you could, if you are sent to a desert island and you're only allowed to take one record or album with you or set, which one was it, would it be that you would take to listen to? Uh, the... It doesn't have to be yours. Dun, 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 dun. Mm. Japan, 24... I don't remember the word between Japan and 24. Okay. But that one. Right. You'll have to link it to us so we can put it in the. No, in the description. no, 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 no. You have Google right there. We do it fast. <laughs> Chop. You had got Google. Chopin. 24 is yeah. the first one on YouTube. Julian's on Dude. it. Dude. Why Julian looks up? Google that? it really fucking fast. Chopin. I think it's Prelude. I don't know. Prelude. No, it's not a Prelude. I'm ignorant, but. <laughs> It's some some. What well, nice looks that up? Could I, I'll hit you with your, the last question for you. If you could ask, well, you are you sh you can do this because you are the time traveler. But if you could ask any person or being from any time, living or dead, any question, who would you ask, and what is the question? Da Vinci, how do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> to, to do what? <laughs> Everything. What do you think his answer is? 
Just fucking do it, man. Like <laughs> Nike, you know. Just do it. Just, just fucking do it. <laughs> like, I think it would be like that. Like, dude, this. I don't know. <laughs> oh, here we go. What have we got here? But like, I, I would love to smoke a joint with Da Vinci. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I don't have a question for him. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh Prelude, twenty four. That one. Yep. And yeah, Da Vinci is pretty fucking awesome. Ooh. Fantastic. And well. Um, Perfect strangers rocking on one stage. Steve Jobs. Oh, okay. Steve oh. Jobs. No, no, no. Fuck Da Vinci. Steve Jobs. <laughs> Steve Jobs. Yeah. What do you want to know? Same thing. Sorry. Same thing. I think yeah. that he's oh. just like a modern Da Vinci or yeah. something. Yep. Uh, modern here we go. Cool. Well, um, thank you very much for your time. Your set was awesome. That energy is thank you like very much, nothing man. else. Um, thank we, you for having me here. No worries. It's a thank pleasure. you. Thank you to Paradigm. Um, we've got Neelix about to start on one stage. We've got Perfect Stranger on the other. Oh. Fuck, man. So uh, we'll be at the Bush Techno. Uh, anything else you'd like to add or anyone you'd like to thank? Keep on rocking that jacket, man. It's amazing. And um, where do I get that magic box to travel? Well, f first you need to like be lost. <laughs> and when you're lost, you find stuff. <laughs> like I was fucking lost. I don't know where the fuck I was. And the magic box is made by Apple, you know? That's the magic box I'm speaking about. Yeah. <laughs> it's an Apple computer, man. Yeah. With Ableton Live inside. <laughs> yeah, I'm away. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Cheers. No, thank you.